Hi Darkroom Booth users, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video I want to show you how you can add preview images to your mirror booth. Now this is specifically for mirror booth users but this can also be applied um, to other uh, users of Darkroom Booth. So I have my mirror booth selected, the my mirror booth event selected. I'm in my screens menu and I have my mirror booth temp screen template selected. I'm going to click edit and um, what we're going to do is we're going to click add photo and then we're going to click um, when shown custom and then we're going to check uncheck all of these options so that only after photo one is selected. So there's a couple things to think about when we add this image. If we were to add it just like that, it'd be pretty close to what the camera captures, but it's actually not accurate. Um, this is longer than what your camera captures, so this information on the side and the other side, right and left sides, would be cut off. So one thing you're going to want to do is go to position and size and We'll just set this at, um, and you can do this in, in pixels or you can do this in uh, inches. Let's go ahead and switch to pixels just to make the math a little bit easier. So we'll say it's 10 by 1500. And the reason why I'm using those numbers specifically is because your camera shoots in a two by three aspect ratio. So if you're using the full frame from the camera, um, this would be 500 times two, and this one's 500 times three. And that's where I got those two numbers. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And it's a little bit off center. We can fix that by going right clicking on the object and going to center both. And um, there's, we're gonna do one final step at the end so you don't wanna just stop here and say, I got it. Wait until the end because there is a little trick to get this all to work. Um, so what we're gonna do is copy and paste. So we have uh, photo number two. And we'll set the when shown to after photo two. And then we're gonna do the same thing for photo number three. We're chain updating the photo number and also when it's shown. So um, Darkroom actually needs the images populated before the uh, all, always so that it can populate them when it's supposed to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click Add photo or uh, add photos and set the starting number to one. And because we're using three images, I'm gonna set the rows to three as well. And it's gonna give us a duplicate of those um, three photos. And, and those just need to be uh, available for the software to run but we don't want them to be on top of everything so what we're going to do is we're going to send it all the way to the back and they would still show in that case we're going to go ahead and add a shape and make it black rectangle when shown is set to always and we're just going to take cover the whole screen and then we're going to drag this behind photo number one. And we can put the text behind it as well because the text is actually uh, supposed to be invisible as well. So everything is hidden after, behind this black rectangle. If we kind of uh, click through, we can see here comes photo one, then it takes photo number two, and then photo number two displays. Um, we'll go ahead and, well actually before we click save, I'm going to show you one more little trick. If you click Add Input and set the position to 0, 0, 
that will move the keyboard to the top of the screen. Some people, by default, it doesn't. It goes to the bottom. Uh, so that might be helpful if you're having people crouch down their knees to type in their email address. So you just set the position to zero and zero, and you'll see that there's the keyboard at the top now. Just an extra little tip. And then we click save, and that's it. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching.